Hey everybody, Adam here with Hometown Acres. Welcome back. Today, we're gonna try to assemble the best homeowners or beginners toolbox. Now, best is gonna be subjective because that's gonna mean something different for everybody. So today we're gonna be building the best toolbox for me. I don't use my tools every single day. I use them to work on projects here and there. So I'm not gonna be going out and getting all brand new snap-on tools, but we are gonna be upgrading some of the tools in this toolbox behind me. I'm 30 years old. Up to this point in my life, all the tools that I've assembled are hand-me-downs from aunts and uncles and grandparents and, and things like that. And not a lot of them are uniform or matching. So that's what I'm gonna work on trying to do today today is getting some new tools to put in here. Now I do want to mention before we go any further, today's video is sponsored by Bespoke and we'll talk more about the services that they offer, but they're going to assist us big time in organizing this toolbox. Before we get started, I want to show you what the state of our toolbox is today. So we have a before to compare to the after at the end of this video. Now I have gone through and organized this somewhat. Uh, the channel locks that I have here will not be replacing those. Those are a good name brand tool. These uh, crescent wrenches here, these are not actual crescent wrenches. That's just the generic term for them. Uh, I bought these to check it out at Tractor Supply and they are not high quality at all. There's a lot of wobble and slop in the screws there that open and close the jaws. Like I said, a lot of these not matching. Um, these are actually a good pair of vice grips here, Stanley. Um, and then just a bunch of other pliers that are, to be honest, quite junk. Uh, not really any good quality stuff there. Next drawer down is gonna be uh, screwdrivers and other driving tools, so a lot of bits and things. Again, hand-me-down, junk pieces, junk hammers, cheapest of the cheap, checkout aisle kind of stuff at, at your hardware store. Nothing really good quality. So we're gonna be looking to upgrade a lot of that stuff. Next drawer, kind of a junk drawer. Uh, looks like I kind of just threw in some cutting items. So a box cutter, sawzall blades, uh, speed square. And then this drawer here, we've got some good stuff. So we've got our impact sockets here. I'll probably end up keeping most of those. Uh, we've got Milwaukee hole saws, Craig jigs. Um, these spade bits here, they are a matching set. However, I got them at a flea market, I think for like five bucks. So that tells you something probably about the quality of them. We might get a new set of spade bits. Um, Drill bits here. Again, these are not very nice drill bits. I've got missing parts and pieces, so we'll probably get some new drill bits as well. Moving on. Uh, junk drawer. Anybody who says that they're organized and doesn't have a junk drawer, I don't believe them. They, they gotta, you gotta have somewhere to stack all the extra miscellaneous items. Right here is the junk drawer. Uh, next drawer down. I really like this drawer here. It's kind of like my own little hardware store. I've got a box of just about every size screw. I've got uh, framing nails, drywall screws, just about everything you could think of. So hopefully if I start a project, I won't need to drop what I'm doing to run to the store to go get screws. Next on the list, this drawer here is just for batteries. I've got my Dremel in here, charging cables, all that good stuff. So I'm not going to be getting rid of all these old tools. I'll probably end up putting them somewhere else, but I want to make sure that everything that lives in this cart is matching, new, and organized. As many of you know, our good friend and neighbor, Doug, has one of the nicest home workshops that I've ever seen. So we're gonna take a tour over at Doug's shop, go through his toolboxes, and make a inventory list of some of the items that we should add to our perfect beginner or homeowner toolbox. So let's hop in the truck and head over to Doug's. All right, so here we are back in Doug's shop. There's the famous toolboxes. And uh, before we get started going through each and every drawer here, Doug had some honorable mentions that we thought we'd get out of the way here first that are probably not gonna be a part of the set we're gonna buy today, but are, are something definitely worth mentioning in this video. So you wanna explain these tools to us, Doug? Yeah, just real quick, this is a, this is a ratcheting screwdriver and you know it's, it's a channel lock, so it's a decent brand. Um, it's got removable bits that have the different size uh, flat tip screwdrivers on it, but it's also got a really nice handy pullout. So your assortment of Torx bits, Phillips bits, um, and the square drive bits. And the nice thing about this again is it goes back to when it's missing, you know it's missing. So you take that out. If you need to change it around and put in your Torx bit, there it is. It ratchets. It's a very handy tool to have if you're putting in a lot of screws. Uh, that you wouldn't use an impact uh, driver with. And so 
that's why I keep that as that's an additional above and beyond a screwdriver set that I would have. Right. Uh, with that in mind, I came across this really cool, handy little Dewalt electric screwdriver, uh, which is a gyroscopic. And when you press the button, it doesn't do anything. You hear the motor running. But just by twisting which way you're supposed to turn that. I've never seen anything like that before. That's pretty it cool. It activates that. Here, we'll put this in it so you can see it. So I press the button, and then I rotate the tool. And the further you rotate it, the faster, faster it goes. It's a, it's a very, very handy thing. Uh, let's say you wanted to put small screws in something. And I made my wife a, a jewelry cabinet once, and I think I had over 400 little miniature screws in it. Yeah. And there was no way I wanted to use this to keep going. This thing, literally, I put my number one Phillips bit in it, put it in there, and just went. And some people will say, well, you have a screwdriver. Why don't you just use that? But that's so much more compact. Yeah, I mean. It, it's the same size as a regular hand screwdriver. The cool factor is, <laughs> is just. Through the roof. Everything about it is cool. Um, where people will say, well, you know, you, they say, well, I'll get carpal tunnel and all that from using a regular screwdriver. So go out and get a, a gyroscopic. They're just, the cool factor is neat. Uh, the other thing this thing does is, is it turns, press the two, and you can turn it that way. So oh, now wow. you can run it with your middle finger or your regular hand, and you can run it as if you were going to do a, a heavy bit driver or something like that where you needed to get some force on it right. to run it in. It's a very powerful little tool. Comes with a, you know, rechargeable battery. What is that, like a, a 12 volt? Uh, honestly, it's an eight, eight volt. Eight volt. Eight volt max, made by DeWalt. Uh, so along with this particular item, another thing that's handy for homeowners is a 90, 90 degree bit attachment. And what that does is, is you can put this on the end of a screwdriver if you want to ratchet something in. And what it, what it does is, is it turns anything 90 degrees. Let's say you're trying to reach into a real tight spot inside of here. That will let you get in there and get into a nice tight spot to do that. So it's, it's like a miniature gearbox then. It, yep. Yep. That's what it is. So you can use it on a regular screwdriver. You could use it on... Something like this. Right. And you can use it on your standard impacts. All right, well, let's go ahead and start getting into the toolboxes here. All right, so, you know, we're not talking about the auto mechanic who's got 45 screwdrivers and 4,000 sockets and all that. This is just tools that I've found over the years as a homeowner that are nice to have around so I don't have to call somebody to, to help me do something more you know, to change a tire in the car. I like to change my own oil. I like to, to do my own mechanical work on my vehicles. I know some people don't do that, but I personally, I do. So, and we'll talk about screwdrivers. Um, so when you're doing, looking for a screwdriver pack, you want to find something that's generally got three different size flat tips, small, medium, and large. And I believe most of them have a number on them. Like this one's 732nd quarter and five sixteenths that's a good average general size so with the flat tips then you move on to the phillips head so with the phillips head you've got again there's a number one phillips a number two phillips the number two is probably 90 percent of the screws that you'll use around the house and then the number three so what i what i like to tell adam is is this is the number one is the one that he's taking the battery cover off of all of his kids' toys with. It's got that tiny little screw in the back of it. This is, this is your Christmas morning screwdriver. That, yep, yep. <laughs> and this is your hanging a picture or doing something, putting together a, a, a shelf, something that your wife might have bought at the store. So that's where you find those. And then the number three is... Uh, You'll be uh, lucky to use it three yeah, times in your life. It's not used much, but when you do run into it, you don't want to use a number two and a number three, and you sure can't use a number two and a number one. Right. It's just the way it is. So uh, a starter pack for screwdrivers, three flatheads, three Phillips heads in the three different sizes, right? Yep. And then, like I said, I would highly recommend a ratcheting screwdriver, too, with 
multiple bits in the back of it. Yep. it just, it's just that much nicer to have. All right, so that's the screwdriver drawer. What's what's next on the list? Um, I know everybody wants to look into the socket drawer, but we'll go to the, the ratchet drawer first. Um, just get yourself a nice standard size uh, quarter inch drive ratchet. If you want to get really carried away, get one that's got a swivel on it. Yep. It'll allow you to get into a tight spot and do whatever. But again, if you're not working on cars, you don't need it, but it, it's it's handy to have. You'll find the situations, and like I said, over the last 30 years, I've found situations where I say, dang, I wish I just had one that, that pivoted or swiveled. And so you, you break down, you go out and you buy one that pivots and swivels, and you put it in your collection and say, okay, I got it. Yep. Um, same with your 3 8 drive. Again, just a, an average, everyday standard length. I have that my father handed down to me when he passed a uh, 3 8 drive torque wrench. And I've got another one here that he had, uh, another 3 8 torque wrench. It's got a different thing on it. I don't know that the average homeowner has to have this, but when you're changing your own tires, mm -hmm. uh, they give you a torque spec on those wheels. I know a lot of people take their impact and they'll run it in until it's done. <laughs> That's fine. You're that person driving that car. Me, I personally like to put my impact on it so that I know that I'm going down the road with my wife and kids in the car. My tire's not going to fall off. You know that old going around the mountain doing 90? Yeah. Yeah, we won't sing the whole song, but... <laughs> well, I have... I actually bought probably two years ago uh, a torque wrench about this size because when I bought my dump trailer, they told me when I pulled out of the parking lot probably no less than three times... Don't forget to check your lug nuts. Don't forget to yeah. check your lug nuts. So I was like, all right, I better get one and actually check the lug nuts. And sure enough, the first time I went to go check them, I probably had six or seven that I got a quarter to a half a turn out of. <laughs> one of them, I got probably two full turns out yeah. of on, on the lug nuts. It, so. It'll make you think. I mean, it's just, there's a reason why they give it a specification. So uh, average day homeowner, do you need a torque wrench? No. But it's also a good peace of mind that you know you put that bolt or that lug nut back on correctly. I think most of the people watching our channel probably have a tractor. And that's another thing. You got to check the, the torques on your uh, lug nuts on your tractor. You got to check yeah. the torque on your loader frame because I did the same thing on, on the tractor. I tightened up a few bolts that weren't quite up to spec, uh, especially with a loader frame. I had one that was, I mean, it was wobbly loose. That's how loose it yeah. was. So, you know, what's what's the quickest way to ruin your weekend project? Have your, something break on you. Yeah. Come to find out it broke because you didn't have a bolt tightened properly. I mean, you, you there's a reason you can't kick yourself hard enough because <laughs> when you do stupid things like that, you think, boy, I, I wish I'd have just pulled my head on my hiney and, and done it the right way first. So yeah. That's kind of the way I look at it is if you're going to take the time to do it, do it right. Yeah. So. All right. So is that it for ratchets? Yeah, that's, that's it for ratchets. Um, you know, and again, we'll just do a quick look. Extensions. You should have at least three extensions for your ratchets. So let's look at the half inch. So you've got about a two inch extension, about a five inch extension, maybe mm. four, and a nice long one. And again, those are going to be for getting into the deep well of your tractor um, rim or your car rim or around your loader arm that you can't reach in there. So you should have a couple of extensions for each size ratchet that you have. Now we could talk about something that goes with the ratchets and that would be the sockets. If you're going to have the half, three eighths and quarter drive, then you probably ought to have some half, three quarter or three eighths and quarter drive sockets as well. And I, I set mine up so my metrics are all on this side and my standards are all on this side. Halves are in the back, three eighths are towards the front and then the, the quarter driver closer so for the average homeowner we're thinking uh quarter inch three eighths half inch shallow well and deep well yeah right? and have a full have a full set when you look this was one of the one of the last sets that i've bought in a long time but i bought it as an actual full set so it doesn't skip any numbers so we're at 25 down to six millimeters and they're all a 3 8 drive. Yep. Doesn't skip any, any sockets. When you're looking for sockets, look for ones that don't skip sizes. Yep. It's, it's, it's much nicer because 
nine out of ten times you're going to pull your your socket tray out and you're going to get that set and you're going to be dang it it doesn't have the 15 16 in it like this one doesn't have the 15 16 in it you're really like that's the one i need right so when you buy a socket set and it could be from anybody it doesn't matter where you get it but look for full sets um go from there now to the wrenches metric and standard wrenches again i don't have a huge set of of everything uh, if you look at a, a auto mechanic they've got three and four drawers of wrenches i've got just what i need right. or what i've had for years and what work um you know here's an inch and an eighth wrench why in the world would you need an inch and an eighth i've got tractors i've got an excavator skid loader you know big equipment that i work on that I do this. Why would you need an inch and a half? Well, you ever take a ball off a trailer hitch? <laughs> you need one. Um, so these are a standard wrench. Box, box in on one end, open on on the other. Uh, very, very common for the average everyday homeowner. I would highly recommend a set of these. Now, if you want to get fancy with it, look for ratcheting wrenches. They are... If I'm grabbing, if I needed a three quarter out of my toolbox, the first one I'm gonna grab is the ratcheting one before I grab this one. Right. Just because if I use this end and then I can get it broke loose or whatever, then I just hurry up and go to that end and, and rip it off of there. Now what about uh, your box end and open end versus a double box end like what you've got back there? These I saw and it was a really neat set. And it's the, the tectin like you're looking for. Yep. And I don't remember, but it needed a long reach and it came in a set. So it came with the uh, standard set and then the other ones are in the metric drawer there. But what's neat about these is, you know, they ratchet on both ends. And again, this is an 11 16 and a three quarter inch or a combination wrench, right. box and ratcheting. But it also pivots. Yep. So that's really handy that if you're in there and you're trying trying to reach into the side of your tractor and you need to get in there on an angle, that's why they're handy. Do you or I need them? No. Are they handy to have around? Sometimes very. Yeah. It might take a job that would be normally a half hour and taking it down to 15 minutes just by the, the ease of getting in there and being able to reach to get to something. And the metric wrenches. Um, pretty much the same as those. Here's the, the other set, the metric set of the tectons. Again, they're ratchet on both ends and they pivot, swivel. And one thing we haven't talked about yet is the wrench holders. That's definitely going to be something I'm going to put on my list for putting these in a drawer. You can see that there's, there's a couple of different kind in, in this set. Um, they're just a plastic little thing that has got a V-notch in it, and I believe that it's got a sticky tape on the bottom side if you want to stick it to the bottom of your box. I don't like doing that because I like to still have the little protective piece of foam in there. Mm -hmm. um, so they make them that do this. They, they make them that are magnetic. So this is a set that I actually cut down to repurpose for something else, but this is also a wrench holder where your wrench drops in there and holds like that and you can have two of them side by side here to hold that and it's got a met, uh, magnet on the back so, so you, if you wanted to you could put it on the side of your toolbox that's nice yeah it, and it's clear out another drawer yep you can put it on the side of your toolbox you can take this to a work cart a metal work cart put it on the side of it or if it's in the drawer of your toolbox that magnet helps hold it in place so it doesn't slide around when you close your door all right, so with, with the standard wrenches, then I like to jump to the crescent wrenches or the adjustable wrenches. I've got a couple different sizes in here. And the funny thing is, is if I go out and work on something, usually the last tool I walk out the door with or throw it in the, the cart with me is an adjustable wrench. Yep. In case my guess on the first four sockets that I grabbed <laughs> was not correct, then I've got this so I can come back, you know, and, and right. break the nut loose. Feel like an idiot and go man yeah. <laughs> i can't believe i missed it by four sizes so anyhow an adjustable wrench and, and look for good ones um 
again, you get what you pay for. These are a channel lock brand. They're a really good adjustable wrench. They stay nice and tight. You know, they, they've got the English side markings and the metric side. And I don't know if you can see that in there, but the metric side markings on yep. that rail. Good quality, heavy duty wrench. Um, they just they just work well. They they slide back and forth nice and easy. They don't jam up. Whereas if you find uh, well, this one is is about as old as it comes. It's made in Australia. Best standard make. Drop forge steel, ten inch. The you know when they supply. say adjustable, it's adjustable. But that sounds like a lot of those guys' excavator buckets out there. They're running <laughs> clunk clunk clunk, banging around. It's got a lot of play. Yeah, in. it's. It, you know, in a pinch, they work. You put it on there, you, you run that up as tight as your thumb can can twist on it and use it. Um, but I don't know too many people that can throw things away like this. Right. So why is it still in here? Because I can't throw it away. <laughs> well, it's like the, the four that I bought. I'm not going to throw them away, but they're going to get replaced in the toolbox. Yeah, they're going to end up down put in them the... somewhere. Put them in the toolbox of your tractor. Yeah. That's a great place for Exactly. Them. Again, I would recommend a couple different sizes. Um, and I'll show you something neat with these two. And again, these are a channel off brand. But I got a small size, a medium size, a large size. And because I work on some bigger equipment, I've got the next size bigger. Again, that's another channel lock. That's a 15 inch. Um, and you might be able to see the markings on that a little bit better. It gives you in the middle of the metric system. So and uh, the standards. So, yep. Um, or if you're out there and you got that big, huge, you know, <laughs> inch and three quarter nut on something that you just, there's no other way around it. That's what you use. When we were working on the tie rods or the, uh, the uh, control arms of the Jeeps, I actually had to use this because it was calling out for a 300 and some foot pound torque. And this was the only thing I had with a cheater bar on it that would hold the nut while we put the torque on the other side of wow. it. Wow. So, so that kind of covers the the wrenches, the adjustable wrenches, sockets, ratchets, and then uh, I think we've got one or two more that we want to look at. Yep. From there, then we'll move on to uh, Allen wrenches, I guess. Vice oh, grips. I'm sorry. Yeah, let's do the vice grips. We wanted to stay with this one. Yep. Uh, vice grips. Does everybody need them? Again, depends on what you're doing. So you've got different different style of vice grips. Some have a flat jaw in them and some of them have a rounded jaw in them but if you're grabbing round things then you want to look for a rounded jaw style vice grip if you're grabbing flat bolts flat nuts whatever you want to make sure your two points of contact are flat on your vice grip so you'll do your adjustment right lock it down your release for those of you that don't know i'm sure <laughs> we've got a lot more educated than that but um so a, a good set of vice grips is, is nice to have. So you're going to want to look for something that's got a round jaw in it, something that's got a flat jaw in it. A good 8 or 10 inch is a good size to have. Um, from that point on, uh, we'll talk about this toolbox. It's got a little bit of different thing. There's some hardware and things in here, but the Allen wrenches. And to have, have it in this L-shaped form where it's over molded, this L of an Allen wrench gave you that torque to really tighten it down or to unloosen it. But it also gives you that once you break it loose, you pick it up and you put it in and now it becomes a quick way or a speed way to un undo that bolt out of that, that mold. Does the homeowner need this? No, it's, it's one of those things that's it's nicer to have. Yeah. It, it works for better things. What I would suggest for the homeowner is a pack of the standard American and a pack of the metric. I like the ball ends on these particular ones, but they do come in a regular flat end on the ends there. The, the reason why I like the ball end on this style is for in most cases, you break the, the bolt loose with the, the long torque end mm -hmm. where you need to have it in there good and flat. Once you've broke it loose, then you can put this end in and it doesn't matter how much you wobble your hands around, that ball stays conformed into the, okay. the socket. So, um, what else is a homeowner going to need? At some point in time, 
and we've talked about this before, you're going to need some files, some punches, and some chisels. I keep them all in the same same drawer. Um, I would recommend a nice little set for the average homeowner of drifts, drift punches. And what this set is, and they're, they're of decent quality, and there's the different sizes that are in there. Okay. So if you're trying to press out a roll pin or something like that, a compression pin in, in a piece of equipment, um, and an attachment, something like that, you might have a compression type of roll pin in, you need to pick the right size diameter punch that will catch the roll pin, but also go through that hole that you're trying to press it through. Okay. So that's that's a good a good set to have punch pins for laying around. And we were just talking, uh, I bought a snowblower for clearing ice off the pond this year, and we had a shear bolt that was broken from the previous person that I bought it from, yeah. and I needed a punch to punch that shear pin out of the drive shaft because it was jammed in there. And sure enough, Doug had a, a punch he brought over and <laughs> got just, it out of there. Again, you just, it's... Like if if Adam said that, I grab this pack and I run over because well, it's got to be one of those. Yeah. Uh, I guess we'll go to dental picks. When I originally discussed this with Adam, he had no idea what he used a dental pick for, and I thought. Yeah, he said there's a dental pick for every situation or every job, and I was like, I've never used a dental pick. I've never seen a dental pick being used to complete a job. I said, so what would you use something like a dental pick for? And he had a pretty good uh, example here for us. Yeah, I've got an example here. A dental pick, different picks. And here is, here's a, a standard set. This is what I would recommend is, is they're about five, maybe six inches long. And it comes in, in most every set. If you look at all these, they come with a straight one, a hooked one, a 90 degree one, and one that's got a 45 bend and a 45 bend. Mm -hmm. Somebody might say, well, geez, where in the world would you use those? Well, I've got a perfect example, and I've seen on different sites where people buy a pressure washer. They got your standard pressure washer tip and your standard pressure washer female receiving end of it. Mm -hmm. There's an O-ring inside there. Yeah. So what you might use the dental pick for is let's say it's leaking the o-rings in there but that o-ring might be torn or worn out so you need to be able to get down in there hook underneath that o-ring twist it and pull it out yep. and that's where that 45 45 tool works perfect for because you can't do it with the the straight pick very easily because there's no way to hook it to pull it this has got too much of a bend on it in some occasions to get it down hooked. in the hole and then because because when you roll it over to pull it out it won't come out because it locks itself in and on some occasions you can do it with a 90 but the reality of it is is why do you have so many dental picks well because you're always pulling out an o-ring pressure washer the other thing that some people might not realize is they're good for is the flat o-ring that they use in a garden hose on the female end there is a rubber grommet in there a rubber thing so again you might lose that or it might get brittle crack become lost or whatever, you need to replace it. But you can take that pick, hook underneath it, and pull out that O-ring. Yep. So, and then just replacing it, you gotta kinda collapse it and work it back in there. But, without a dental pick, you cannot get your finger underneath that to pull it out. Right. So that's where the dental pick comes in, you just hook it and pull it out. So, All right, so for the uh, homeowner's toolbox, a uh, four pack of dental picks. Yep. And that's, that's going to get you out of your, your weekend bind while your garden hose or your pressure washer is leaking. So I think that covers our base. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start doing some shopping. And I think Doug touched on it earlier. I'm going to try to go with as much uh, Tecton uh, tools as I can. And the reason for that is I've been doing a lot of research on tools online. And I couldn't find really hardly any bad things that people said about Tecton tools. So, and the other thing is, is we can do just about all that shopping here in Doug's, Doug's workshop. So we're going to go ahead and order some Tecton tools. And uh, when they get here, we'll pick back up on this video. All right, guys. So it's about a week later and all of our new tools came in and I did have a slight issue. These deep well sockets, I don't have a drawer that is tall enough in this Kennedy toolbox that'll allow those deep well sockets. All of these medium sized drawers here are not deep enough to allow them in. The only one I could put them in would be this very bottom one. And who wants to be getting sockets out of the bottom drawer? So 
we ended up going out and getting this US General 44 inch by 22 inch deep cabinet, mainly for this top drawer here that we can go ahead and put sockets in. This is about an inch deeper than those medium sized drawers in the Kennedy toolbox. Now, as far as getting all of these tools into that new toolbox in an organized manner, you can see that we've uh, we bought a lot of things that came organized already with these socket trays, wrench holders, but in terms of keeping you know, your ratchets, your screwdrivers, your pry bars, your pliers, all of that good stuff organized, that's where today's sponsor comes in, Bespoke. Let me explain what Bespoke does. Bespoke is a laser engraving company that specializes in custom toolbox shadow boards. Their mission is twofold. One, help their customers spend less time looking for tools and more time working on their projects. And two, bring a smile to your face every time you open a toolbox drawer. The company was started by a husband and wife team located in Washington State, and I absolutely love promoting small businesses like these when we can. So my favorite part about Doug's shop is not that all the tools are snap-on or that he has three sets of everything. My favorite part is that there is a place for every tool, so when you go to look for it, you know where it is, and when it's missing, it sticks out like a sore thumb. Also, gone are the days of losing a tool, going out and buying a new one, and then finding the old one two days later, and now you've got two of them. Now, Doug hand cut out all of his drawers, which is definitely an option, but I don't know about you guys, I don't have that kind of time or the steady hand. Bespoke takes all the work out of custom shadow boards for your toolbox, and they are laser precision cut. All you have to do is complete their three-step process. First, measure and record the width and depth of the drawer to the nearest sixteenth of an inch. Step two, draw an outline border and mark the dimensions using a high contrast background material. Step three, lay out your tools how you want them organized and take an overhead picture and submit to Bespoke. They do the rest and mail out your custom shadow board to you. Let's see how ours turned out. All right guys, so if Bespoke's mission is to put a smile on your face every time you go to open up your toolbox, I gotta say that is mission accomplished. As another famous YouTuber says, that gives me the fizz. So the thing I love so much about this drawer is the flexibility that Bespoke gives you. You're not tied down to a perfect square or rectangle. So in this drawer, we've got our half and three eighths sockets that take up the entire drawer. And then this socket tray for our quarter drive only comes up to right here. So in order to get all of our ratchets and extensions and swivel heads and things in this drawer, we had to create kind of a T-shaped foam cutout. So it goes up there, down and around, and same for our metric side. So we've got standard and metric on this side. We've got swivel head ratchets in all three sizes. We've got straight head ratchets in all three sizes. And then we've got extensions for all three sizes and then a couple swivel heads. So that wraps up this drawer here. Moving down to this drawer, we've got our metric ratcheting wrenches. We've got box end on this one, double box end on these ones. And then we go down to standard, same thing, double box, standard uh, single box. This drawer here, we have all of our adjustable wrenches. And here's something else I thought was really cool that Bespoke can do, and they can actually laser engrave your logo into the center of your shadow board. I thought that's just a really nice touch. The other nice thing is you've got all the different colors to choose from. So as you can see, we went with red here to match the toolbox itself. So everything's matching, everything's color coordinated, everything fits in its home. It just looks awesome. Moving on to the next drawer, we've got files, chisels, and punches. And here's an example of a drawer that we did not fully complete for the shadow board. We only have cutouts for the files, chisels, and punches. And the reason being the rest of the stuff that's housed in this drawer right now is all disposable items. So let's say a year down the road, these Sawzall blades wear out and I decide to go with a different brand from Diablo or a different size pack or something. I'm not tied into something that's this same shape and size. Also, if I decide I want to move all of these items out of this drawer because I ended up buying more files, chisels, and punches, I can go ahead and finish hand cutting out the rest of this drawer by myself, and it leaves me room to kind of future-proof this drawer. Moving on to the screwdriver drawer, we took Doug's advice and got four different sizes of flathead, four different sizes of Phillips, and then we did end up getting one of these ratcheting screwdrivers, and I've already had this for about a week or two, and I've probably used it no less than a dozen times. It just comes in really handy. And this is another example of an incomplete shadow board, so we only did the screwdrivers and the ratcheting screwdriver. In the back here, I did not do cutouts for all of my old hand-me-down screwdrivers, because these are gonna be used as disposable items. I'm gonna probably torture the crap out of these things using them for pry bars. They're gonna get ruined and end up needing replaced, but they still serve a purpose in keeping me from using my good ones that have the foam cutouts as pry bars. Plus it gives me the flexibility if I do decide to add more screwdrivers, I can still finish hand cutting out this drawer by myself. 
Moving on to the next drawer, we've got our pliers, we've got our end cutting pliers, we've got our diagonal cutting pliers, lineman pliers, needle nose pliers, and then we've got our aviation snips right, left, and center. I think that pretty much rounds out all the tools we bought for the perfect beginner's toolbox. Now you don't have to go out and buy all brand new tools like I did. Like I said at the beginning of this video, the only reason I did that was because I didn't have tools. I hadn't purchased tools before. Everything that I had was hand-me-downs from grandparents and aunts and uncles and things. So if you already have tools and they're just disorganized, go check out Bespoke's website. I've got a coupon code down below. If you enter hometown at checkout, you'll get 15% off of your order. So this is just another video in the series we've been working on all winter long, trying to turn our workshop into something that we can be proud of. And not only that, but I feel like we've got a pretty good start on creating a legacy toolbox. Something that I can pass down to my son and be proud of the fact I know I'm giving him good quality tools and I've already done the legwork and getting it organized for him. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed this one, give me a big thumbs up, click that subscribe button, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.